All right, everybody, are you ready? Let me get my microphone. Uh, is my audio okay? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So. All right, great. All right, three, two, one. Hello there, tribe, and welcome to another episode of This Week in WordPress and Tech, the WP Tonic Show. This is episode 712. I am your hostess with the mostest today. My name is Stephanie Hudson, and I am representing Focus WP, where I'm the co-founder and also I'm the CMO of Bertha AI. Why don't we meet our esteemed panel? The one and only Jonathan Denwood. Thank God, right? Yes. I got Stephanie out of bed, actually. She wasn't planning on doing this. But, uh, <laughs> kind of dragged her virtually. Dragged kind of come me. on, Stephanie. Um, oh. I'm the founder of WP Tonic. If you're looking to build a membership coaching website on WordPress, we're the people. Back over to you, Stephanie. John Locke. John Locke from Lockdown SEO here in Sacramento. And Spencer. Spence from WP am I on? Spence from WP Launchify.com. Mr. Chris Badgett in the house. Hey, I'm Chris from Lifter LMS, and I have a podcast for course creators and WordPress pros called LMS Cast. And my fellow female panelist, Miss Sally. I'm Sally Getch, the WP fangirl. And <clears throat> uh, waiting for the cats to appear. We look forward to it every week, so. Uh, okay, guys, let's have a quick break uh, to hear from our major sponsors. We'll be right back. And we're back. Uh, so there are some special offers just for the tribe on the WP Tonic website. Head over to wp-tonic.com slash recommendations to check all of those out. And now let's get into our stories for the week. First up, we're heading over to the Tavern, WPTavern.com. This article by Sarah Gooding is called WordPress.com ends recent pricing experiment reverts to previous model. And uh, Jonathan, you're laughing already. What do you what do you think about this article? Well, it's just the comments. As always, you've got to read the comments and um, from WP, um, the editor, the chief. Um, he commented, um, um, well, if that's an experiment, I like, I like to see a non-experiment. That's all I'm going to say. Um, I think that was a, a cock-up. That was... <laughs> For those who out there who haven't read the article, tell them what the experiment was briefly. Well, they changed all the prices you know, from a really complicated five-tier pricing structure to two. And it w didn't go down very well with hmm. the user's base, which is not unexpected because, you know, you're dealing with WordPress people. So what do you expect? Uh, um, so, um, yeah, it was all a bit of a shambles, really, wasn't it? So they've had, they've had to uh, tread water and revert back to the old, very complicated five-tier structure, you know, from one to the other, really, Stephanie. Uh, Sally, what do you think about this? Uh, I suspect that it was not the complexity, but the uh, affordability that was probably uh, the, the, the problem with the two tier. Uh, but I, I, I especially and, you know, I had I vaguely, you know, noticed this change going by. We probably mentioned it at the time that it happened, but I don't deal with WordPress.com much, so it, it wasn't on my mind. Um, and, but of course, once you're paying $45 a month for WordPress.com, you you start wondering like why you're not just at a different hosting company. Uh, and and uh, it, uh, I think that that was uh, with a sort of minimum of 15 bucks a month for pro features. Uh, a lot of people started wondering that. Uh, I do like the comment that says uh, it was it was indeed an experiment. They were experimenting with people's patience. Uh, and and yeah, let's get a comment on that too. That's yeah, yeah. Com com companies, uh, you know, companies do this. They they say, oh, we've got this idea for changing things. We think it will be brilliant, and uh, 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 you know, and everybody screams about it, and they back back down and and revert. And you think, did you do any, you know, user testing? Uh, except that I uh, was reminded the other day. Uh, apparently, back when they tested Clippy, 
Uh, the thing that uh, uh, part of the reason that Microsoft uh, ended up uh, rolling it out was that um, Clippy gave the testers enough of a sense that it was a person that they were afraid to hurt its feelings when they filled out the questionnaire after playing with it. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> so uh, uh, user testing can be uh, can be funny, but yes, so. Uh, uh, you know, uh, they've changed their prices back. Uh, one supposes some people are uh, relieved, some people are annoyed, um, and uh, they'll carry on with their uh, let's A-B test with millions of people who use WordPress because, you know, we'd rather do that than, um, mm. yes, uh, <clears throat> uh, than be professionals. Um. So there is a Sally G who left a comment on this. That was article. not me. That was not me. <laughs> That's funny. I, I, like, and oh. I know how to spell my own name when I leave comments. What spell? Is it spelled wrong? It just I says spell, Sally I, G. It says Sally with a Y. I am Sally with an I E. Oh, That's why. See, I don't see it. Oh, sorry. Sally in the hood. Sally. Sally from the block. Sally from the block, right. That's it. <laughs> Uh, Spence, do you have any thoughts on this? Uh, OG Sally. Yeah. The OG Sally. <laughs> you know, one of, one of the things that I think is going to be a trend, like I, again, I use avocado appliances and bell bottom jeans. It's 35 years between a trend of like recycling, you know. So I have kids that wear clothes that I go, oh my God. <laughs> I went to a resale Please, shop please. The, 70, the 70s like, happened once, it was bad enough. I was like, that's my actual coat from high school. It's been, you know, it's just, so one of the things that recycles in business is humility and honesty and personal relationships. Now the problem is social media has distorted that. But what I'm suggesting here is my takeaway is really simple. WordPress started out as a group of human beings talking to human beings and acting like human beings where you can be an a-hole and then apologize and say you're wrong and everybody's like that's cool we like you because you're our neighbor and, and whatever but then what happens is corporate interests get involved just like in the real world and social media and all the snarkiness and so wordpress there's some person who made the choice a bad choice they're not saying who it was and they're not just come out and say i'm spencer foreman I have a problem. I made a mistake and I'm sorry. But you know what would happen if they would do that? Then everybody would say, it's okay, you're a human being. But instead they go, it was an experiment. No, it was not. You're just too full of yourself to admit that you're real people and some real person made a mistake. And I, for one, am on the record now in this moment going forward. The things I'm about to talk about in the future and, and be, is I'm going old gangster myself. For all the things that I do, I've always tried to maintain this, but for a business standpoint, I'm saying what we need more than ever now is for the WordPress community to all go back to being human beings, like most of us here are, and say, I made a choice, it was wrong. I made a choice, it was great. And then everybody can get on board with supporting it. But this kind of thing is sort of tongue in cheek embarrassingly laughable because we all know that nobody's getting paid corporate pricing to run stuff around here. And they made a bad choice because the person who did this had no idea what the community's interests were. And that's well, it's, all. It's, it's that fun. wonderful. Uh, 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 it's that wonderful government expression. Mistakes were made. <laughs> like I, I, you, know, I, you know, who's really the, uh, the extreme version of this. Sorry, John. The extreme version of this that I don't want this to become is like a billionaire like Elon Musk because he's always owned his own. I'm right. I'm wrong. I'm, but he's now off. You know. Wait. The when? Ha, what? When has he ever been wrong? I'm saying he's had some things where I literally watched a video where there was an interviewer talking about one of the rockets, and he was a fanboy for fangirl from from YouTube, and he says to Elon. You know, what about the cooling? Can't you do the cooling down to the, and like on camera, Elon's like, oh my God, you're right. We can change the rocket. And he like literally ran off to tell the engineers to change the rocket, which is what I'm saying here. It's like, 
It doesn't matter how big you are. You just can't go off the rails and be an asshole about it. But please, let's all just be more human here, especially at WordPress.com. And whatever. One of the other stories we're going to talk about, like, please, Matt, give up the reins of .org. Please. Please. Go do .com and give up the reins of .org so the rest of us can get back to doing what we used to do. That leads right into what I was going to say, and that is, and, and people get confused, and I want to clarify this too, because I, I see certain people in the WordPress community saying, oh, well, I talk to like different people and uh, at, at the meetup, and, and people in WordPress who dis WordPress uh, while they're making money with it, I don't get it. Well, you can like criticize something and still be a part of that community. Um, the self-hosted WordPress.org, um, that is a wonderful tool because it's extensible. I don't like to mess with .com. I don't like taking clients that are on .com um, because of this reason. It's, it's, they're getting their ass beat by Squarespace and Wix for a reason. Just this the the hosted version and and this kind of clownery is part of why you can't just like flip the pricing and then flip it back it just it just looks weird anyway clownery is the word of the week now for me anyway <laughs> we got more clownery coming up in our next story too but before we move on chris did you have anything to add to this uh experiment i'll just article? i'll just take a different take in that um Pricing Always, and I love it. is really hard, and um, and sometimes you fail. And I just want to kind of note some resources for anybody trying to figure out their pricing. Patrick Campbell is one of the top pricing experts in the world. He's a, he had a software called ProfitWell that he just sold to Paddle for two hundred million dollars, yeah. and I've learned a ton from Patrick about pricing and. Um, it's hard, and, but you know how a lot of people do their pricing? If for those of you listening who can't see me, they just kind of hold up their finger and touch the wind and guess. But there's actually a bunch of science and methods to actually, especially for SaaS or software companies. That's, that's been the story of my whole life, Chris. <laughs> yeah. It's an it's a art and a science, but there is actually a lot of science that you can look at to figure out what to do add-ons, what your market will pay for, which features should be in which plan. Um, so go check out Patrick Campbell if you're looking to optimize your pricing. And I do have respect for what um, WordPress.com did in rolling it back. It reminds me when Pippin uh, Williamson also tested higher pricing for like a month or three months and then rolled it back because the market uh, didn't take it as well or whatever. So sometimes you make mistakes on the pricing. But yeah, that's all I got. All right. Well, then why don't we move on to our next... I already forgot my word. Clownery? Was that the word? <laughs> Our next article featuring uh, Elon Musk, as promised. This is coming from theatlantic.com. This is an article by Ian Bogost. Bogost? I don't know. Uh, sorry, Ian. Everything about Twitter v. Musk is utter nonsense. <laughs> so uh, who would like to give a quick synopsis of what we're dealing with here? John Locke, I feel like you... Are ready to kick this one off. Uh, so, <clears throat> Edge Lord Elon Musk um, wanted to, to leverage Tesla stock to buy Twitter. The Tesla stock went down. Now he doesn't have the money. He might have to pay a billion dollar fee. He said that um, uh, he tried to back out of the deal basically because he said that there's a bunch of bot traffic on there, which there's a lot of it on a lot of channels. I don't know. But now it's coming out that part of like why he maybe wanted to buy Twitter was to silence the fact that his transgender daughter wants nothing to do with him. He has like nine kids from uh, different women, including two from one of the people that he works with at the uh, Neuralink where they put the chips in the monkey brain. You mean brains. somebody who works... For him, which is a significant... It works for him, yeah. <laughs> a subordinate, yeah. Where At the place where they put the chips in the monkey brains and, and fry the monkeys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So oh, now he's... He, now, well, you know what's really weird? Christopher uh, uh, Bowsey, Boozy. Um, hey, he, hey, John, do you think I need a chip? Maybe. 
<laughs> in your monkey brain? Yeah. The guy the guy who runs Bot Sentinel basically um a, lo a lot of people notice this when the news of Elon buying Twitter first came out, there was like a big increase in far right um accounts and now they've all kind of subsided. And it was big news. Everybody was like, "Oh, like cry harder, libs. Elon's buying Twitter. You can't do anything." And now all that is like gone away. So it, what's going to happen is Twitter is going to sue Elon because they're, they they wanted to lock in the price that he uh, said that he was going to buy it for. He's going to end up paying this billion dollar fee, um, and they're going to they're going to grind Profit it out change. to yeah for him it is. I mean so. But he just, yeah, he just looks like a, you know, he looks like a fool in this situation. Floundery. I don't, I, I don't know about the person, about his children, really, John, because I, I really couldn't care less if he was shagging a donkey, to be quite truthful about it. Don't give well, him ideas. I feel sorry for the donkey. <laughs> you know, uh, um, uh, um, Really, so I never wanted to bring that up because I really don't care what he's shagging. Uh, um, so, um, but the other bit, you were spot on. I, you know, but there, I thought the piece was quite good because it really showed that both sides almost as bad as one another. Really, they, you know, you know, but you know, I thought the the good bit in the piece where it pointed out the hypocrisy of of him. You know, he was complaining about all these fake accounts. He said that was one of the reasons why he wanted to buy it. And then, then he then he has the audacity to say, "Well, there's too many of them." You know, come off it, will you? I, I think anybody who Twitter's works... done a bit of waff. Um, they've done a bit of waffling as well. Oh, <laughs> like, oh sure, no, you can't uh, yeah. But, but wait, I you're think... not going to buy us? Any anybody who. Uh... Uh, 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 who wants to learn to write snark masterfully should study this article. Uh, 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 it, it really is is just um, a beautiful it, 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 in that. Yes, in that dispute, the in, in that description, the dispute sounds almost normal, but the Musk Twitter story is not normal. It makes no sense at all in the literal sense of nonsense making. Indeed, the nonsense it makes erodes every dimension of analysis, including business strategy, online ce celebrity, contract law, and internet culture. If you try too hard to suss out what is happening and why, you'll only fall inside a tesseract of bilge and the madness this entails. <laughs> um, uh, 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 I've, got, I've got to interrupt Sally I, you know, I think Francisco gets the top notch for his comment how Elon's topic is related to WordPress he wants to buy liquid <laughs> I don't yes. give him ideas uh, yeah. he, he gets top marks much for that too, much uh, um, too pedestrian I think yeah. Let's see. Sorry. But, oh wow everybody was talking and then nobody was talking Chris tell mm -hmm. us your side of this what's your opinion I feel like it's really hard to like get to the facts. You know, there's so much, sure. so much spin, and uh, and also, like, what is actually going on from the board perspective or Elon perspective? What's the strategy? It, there's, it's really hard to tell. At the end of the day, uh, I think what this shows is that we need a new social media platform, and it's not TikTok. I mean, TikTok's great for what it is, but. The potential of what Twitter can be. Are you talking about the Chinese Communist Party's social media platform, aren't you? Chris? I don't think it exists yet. And I think no. Elon's original plan was to either buy Twitter and make it what it should be, or he's going to do it a different way. So I think this is actually still going to happen. Uh, either he'll end up getting Twitter, or he's going to build his own social network or take over one that's you know more forward uh, forward technology facing without so much baggage. So I think that's what's going to happen at the end of the day. I think it's, uh, well, he could end up yeah. getting it for a bargain basement, uh, uh, a price. It's, it's, yeah, just, yeah, I don't sure yes. Can... What Twitter should be from Elon Musk's, uh, point of uh, view. Uh, they already uh, built truth social though. 
Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you're going to fold and it how anyway. And su- how successful that was. I don't think you're going to fold it anyway. You know, the, the, the amount of kids he's popping out, he, you know, he needs the money to feed the kids, doesn't he? I'm sure he feels that he has an obligation to um, spread his genius throughout the world. <laughs> well, he's doing a good job, isn't he? He's, oh, he's, he's ha- going to get no, into he, triple figures. He's, helping... he's going to have more kids than Boris Johnson, you know, for freaking sake. He specifically though. said that he is a uh, that one of the biggest problems on the planet is underpopulation or something like that so he's well, doing his part he's and his we, bad, like, he? let's yeah he has, he's had 10 kids one died so he's got nine and uh his dad just had a baby with somebody 40 years younger than him uh, his stepdaughter his, his stepdaughter, stepdaughter. <laughs> oh, God. jesus oh, shades of woody oh, allen that he raised since she was 4 <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's not. It's correct. all kind of ick. Mm. So much ick. Anyway, they he also mm. claims to be helping uh, with population. Well, you know, issues. you know, they're so wor- worried about the, them genius white people being replaced. <laughs> see if uh, they don't have enough kids. <laughs> oh, oh man! All right, you guys. Did anybody not talk about this? Can we move on? Because oh, the God. sheer absurdity of the is the title of this, and it's absolutely true um let's move on to story number three masterwp.com is wordpress bigger than walmart is an article by rob howard and uh let's see um spence do you want to give us a give us an overview of this article what is this comparison all about uh the reader's digest version is rob is very good at looking at things analytically analytically excuse me and uh, he's basically saying that you have to look at the differences between like gross domestic product versus the profitability and like w- how many users versus how many paying customers. The takeaway is that we do have a very vibrant, you know, uh, WordPress ecosystem, but that it's not really an apples for apples comparison the way many people present it. So you have to look at it in terms of like, what's the actual practical difference? And he brought up other companies like Apple themselves and so forth. Um, I think the the real takeaway, though, is that it doesn't matter whether it's a hundred million, a billion, nineteen point seven three trillion. Um, the reporting of of what was said by WP Engine was not really relevant to anybody. All that really matters is we've got a lot of money that could be made here if we get our shit together. Do you, want my, do you want my Do you want my shorter version, Stephanie? Love it, Jonathan. Thank you. Yeah, well, the, well, the shorter version is the WP articles are a load of shit, basically. It's just bloody okay. bullshit, basically. They, you know, uh, it was, and he's just pointed out how bad it was, basically. It's like the fallacy. It's like the fallacy when you work in reverse as an entrepreneur, where like Chris, you know, like this, you say, oh. There's, I don't know, a hundred million people have bicycles and I'm making a a magic marker. You can draw your name on a bicycle wheel. So if I only get 1% of the market, I'm (laughs) getting this much money in profit. That's the farthest thing from the truth because you don't even know that you have access to it. It's a superbly written piece. He was really on fire because- Rob is very analytical. He he just destroyed this. Whoever wrote that piece for WP Engine, God help him. What a heap of crap. Honestly, what a (laughs) heap of bloody- We should have had that as our article. Who's shagging that donkey? (laughs) Yeah, he's shagging that bloody donkey at WP Tonic. Uh, WP Engine. Uh, that was a that might have been a Freudian. Yeah. I, I, th- I think <laughs> what we need a new Jonathan Denwood meme is whenever there's an article written by somebody that's poorly done, it's like jump the shark. Remember, like last show, I was listening in the car and he says, and the jump and the shark finally shark jumped. jumped. Like yeah. We need a new Jonathan Denwood meme. It's like whenever he he, he reads something bad. I think that article is shagging the donkey. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what we're going to say from now on. That article is shagging. Uh, oh, I don't know if I can shagging cut. the donkey. Meanwhile, Jonathan's oh, face just turned absolutely crimson. 
I was, I Which was doesn't happen between, very often. <laughs> I was midway between Illinois and Wisconsin, and you guys had the show going, and then Jonathan says the, and then the shark, the shark jumped jumped on this one. I was going to let it go, but he said it like three times. And Stephanie had to explain what the happy days is to, to Jonathan. Uh, the fonts. Yeah, the fonts. Yeah. The fonts Sorry, jumped the shark. Uh, Sally, have you had a chance to weigh in on this? I don't believe you have. Uh, I, I don't believe I have either, although I I, uh, uh, I think it's been reasonably uh, uh, well uh, uh, described uh, here. Yeah, you, I, Sally, do you, you know, we're talking about WP Engine. They're, they're pretty smart people. They've got some smart people that found yes, it. Yes, so and they, they you, think you think somebody... You think Pop somebody? Um, you, you, you think know, somebody in the organization would read company. this They've crap? Got a lot of like, I don't and... think we should publish this because it's absolute bullshit. You know? <laughs> well, it is. I mean, the uh, uh, the thing that Rob is pointing out in in this is that uh, you know this was published as. Uh, uh, basically a bit of rah-rah marketing. And so it doesn't include the kind of evidence that would make it actually convincing to somebody like Rob who wants to say, hey, I want to see the raw data here and what your sources are and, and what qualifies as uh, uh, literature well, and any of those I things. It's the space, isn't it, Sally? It's basic 101 of journalism, isn't it? You know, for God's sake, you know. I don't. I don't know what. To, what is the one hundred and one of journalism these um, days? How I, often I, do people actually check I, facts or, or basic cite facts sources? Facts and base it on some kind of reality, not just something that comes into your freaking and, mind. And this has happened in journalism in the last ten years. How often? You know, I think in, WP, in, I, a, in a, a, a few uh, uh, in-depth places that that actually tell you about things versus think, everybody else's. Uh, uh, clickbait headlines and alternative facts i think wp engines become the trump of the trump of wordpress i think that's an a, a a dire exaggeration especially in terms of what it's like working for them mm. uh, okay chris we'll looks stunned on. chris looks absolutely <laughs> stunned he's not having well any me and chris are a little bored we're over this article right chris yeah. we're over i think it's i'll I just add that uh i think Part of the problem here is that I remember when WP Engine sent out the survey. So they're collecting self-reported data from people who are, you know, talking about their income and how they make money with WordPress. And if you think about like the people, English speaking likely, that would likely take the time out of their day to fill out the survey. Uh, well, yeah, the thing about surveys is uh, when yeah. they're done like this is, hello, selection bias. Exactly. So it's, I, I I think there is a like like Rob mentioned it's it's lumpy and it's unevenly distributed and the most money in WordPress economy is in the inside the hosting companies of which the surveyor is one of those. So uh, yeah, it's like well, the, according to the people we surveyed, uh, yeah. uh, things are looking good for WordPress. Uh, yeah. Okay, but um, you know uh, what's that to do with the price of tea in China? Well, and I mean, you can, we all know how statistics work. You know, you can get them, you can tweak them to make them look like whatever you want, which is another thing that they were sort of saying in this article. You could take these numbers and manipulate them as you want. Guys, we do need to take a quick break to hear from our sponsors. We're going to pay the bills here. We will be right back. And we're back. If you'd like to see some special offers just for the tribe from our major sponsors, we would encourage you to go to wp-tonic.com slash recommendations. And as always, while you're on the site, if you haven't already, jump over to the newsletter page, sign up, and you can get all of Jonathan Denwood's extra thoughts on our articles each week. Because this week's this tough? this this week's editor oh. this week's editorial is gonna be about donkeys. I bet. Yeah. yeah. We got a we have a whole Shrek th theme going. Yeah. Uh, I don't what's even want to think about what's it. What's the Shrek thing? It's shagging. It's I know. Shrek. No, it's, I think he's, Greg. Donkey um, the character. Yeah, the oh. donkey is the character. And that's what he calls him. Donkey. Oh, I got but he's it. mixing his accents a little bit. Okay. It's English and that one's Scottish. But still, we get where you're coming from. Greg. I get the connection. Sort of. <laughs> 
All right, now let's move on to an article on TheVerge.com and one of the um, more creative websites I've seen in a while. Uh, TheVerge.com, this article is called The Great Fiction of AI, The Strange World of High-Speed Semi-Automated Genre Fiction. And this website, if you, um, if you have not opened this, it is built like an old... Uh, computer interface. Yeah, it's uh, like one of their previous articles. I don't know who they got designing for them, but he's top, she or he is top notch, aren't they? You yeah, know? I mean, I don't want to look at every website like this, but this really is cool. And you can move around the little icons for the other, um, like for the credits and my novel. And, you know, there's just all these cool, you can minimize the window. I actually, uh, the article goes on forever. I actually presume it was actually written by <laughs> 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 it may have been so uh this is this is one that's of interest to me because obviously i'm involved with bertha ai and this is talking about these another gpt3 use case uh where these fiction writers there's a um oh what's it called i gotta find the page oh pseudo right where it's um it's specifically primed and trained to help fiction writers write more and there's this whole world apparently of like she called the author calls it um why can i hear myself that's weird that happens to me all the time actually, somebody else was listening you just hear my voice in your head my, my own voice <laughs> oh okay uh anyway she's talking about how like this I don't even know what I was going to say. I'm going to let somebody else talk. I got distracted by hearing my own voice. Chris, what do you got yeah. for us here? What do you I recently jumped in and been playing with Bertha.ai. And I got to say, I, I was amazed at the output. Like, I was actually really skeptical about AI writing tools. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I started playing around with it. And the quality of the stuff that comes out is, it's just kind of mind-blowing to me. So what happens now that we live in a world where, uh, you know, we can entertain ourselves, write our, our, do our business writing with assistance. I think it's really fascinating. So like at some point, will the machines become more interesting than the humans? It's just an even further advancement into the, um, the workload of humans and how far, you know, there's this, this idea that the machines can't do the creative work. But this is kind of that line is moving. You know, you still got to put some inputs in, some quality inputs to get good stuff out. But um, I just find it an interesting time to be alive. And eventually we're just going to have, if we think information overload is a problem now, what, what's it like in 10 years from now when there's just infinite stories, infinite information, infinite movies? You don't even need the real actor because you can do the deep fake and you can, you know, bring somebody we'll back. We'll ignore most of it as we usually do. Yeah. <laughs> it will affect yeah. us, though. There's no yeah. denying that it will affect us. Looks like a vintage porn site? What kind of porn yeah. are you into, Greg? That's I so gave him a link to Ling's Craig, cars. Uh, I'm starting <laughs> to wonder about Craig there. Uh, yeah, I know. Cars yeah. Ling's cars. I just shared that with somebody yesterday. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so, John Locke, what do you think about AI for fiction writing? It would be very interesting to see. I mean, I, I know like that authors that, you know, turn out books uh, every day, they try to get like a certain word count every day. Um, using AI for that could be very interesting. Um, I, I think for me, it's, it's it like... It will be the end of NaNoWriMo. Um, oh, I don't know. If, I mean, if, you can ha if you can have an AI generate words, I mean, you know, that's... It's it's one little aspect of the cyberpunk world that, that we envisioned decades ago, uh, if if it could uh, pass the the smell test, you know, and and pass off as as a human writer. Yeah, the bit the bit that interested me, you know, the AI. I, I just chose it for you, Stephanie, and for Andrew because I was nasty to Andrew last week, so I thought I'd choose AI a <laughs> bit. Uh, and he's not even here for you to. Be I know he's him. recovering from last week. He uh, hurt his feelings. Uh, um, so uh, such a he's very sensitive. He's yeah. a very sensitive man underneath very, all yeah. that 
the uh, air. Um, near 40 C temperatures. But yeah, exactly. Like. Um, he's probably sweating it out in the shed, isn't he? Uh, um, so, uh, but the thing that interested me was the bit about being a writer on Amazon. You know, it seems, a lucky, it seems like a bloody nightmare, doesn't it, in a way? She's I mean, saying, I'm making almost like six figures, but you've got to like... You got to knock a novel out, you know, in four weeks. Otherwise, you're reading um, Tribe, but Am- uh, Amazon will um, disown you, and you-, you end up on the street. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, that was the bit of uh, well, me. yes, I've heard writers talking about what it's like working with with Amazon, but of course, the problem is, you know, it, it, uh, having raving fans uh, uh, is a little bit of a drawback because. Uh, they can read a novel a lot faster than you can write one. Uh, yeah. a, a, and if, if you are in the, uh, 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 you know, and if you're in the middle of a, uh, a of a series and you end on a cliffhanger, everybody's like, where's the next book? Where's the next book? Where's the next mm-hmm. book? I mean, they were doing that to what's his lips about uh, 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 Game of Thrones. Um, do you guys, do you guys there have is a, a lot of pressure. Do you guys have any knowledge of anybody other than your own family member's phone numbers? <clears throat> Can you remember? Or Like if you said... I can't hey, even remember my own. I don't know anybody right. else's. A- that's right. I have to look at my husband's. Um, okay, so here's the metaphor. I'm in, uh, I was in Camp Visiting Day weekend, and we're up in northern Wisconsin, and we go to a Walmart to get some tchotchkes for the kids' need and stuff. Anyway, first thing comes to mind is, when you need to call somebody today versus when all of us were, you know, early days of phones, you knew people's phone numbers, right? You knew all your friends' phone numbers by heart, or you had like a pencil and paper, and you had. Hey, I can I can remember the phone number of the house I lived in as a young child, but uh, okay. you know, who learns these things now? So nobody. I mean, we know our own cell phones, maybe, but nobody knows their business colleagues' phone numbers, and likewise. Mm-hmm. The, the phones and everything else have all caused a certain level of like um, deterioration of our brains when it comes to things that are otherwise able to be looked up, right? We used to rote memorize a lot of stuff. But where I'm going with this is that like that 35-year-old cycle, I'm in Walmart and in the electronics section is a whole area of vinyl albums. Now, what I'm suggesting is AI writing and movies and and photos and everything else, it will just be like unlimited content. And you know what that's going to do? It's going to cause a certain segment of people to long for the, the, the tactile relationship kind of thing of a real human's content. Just like why somebody in 2022 is going to go back to having a vinyl album and, you know, all the dust things and all the rest. It's the experiential part of it. And similarly, like knowing phone numbers and knowing stuff. You're going to know stuff about people because there's a tool that'll probably be a chip pretty soon that will dial all the phone numbers for you. So when things go too far the other direction, you get abundant levels of AI stuff and we'll all be saturated by it. We're going to seek out the alternative. That's why Top Gun 2022 with practical flying effects has made a billion dollars Versus the CGI version like Marvel that might have, you know, maybe done not so well. It's because people want that thing that AI can't do. In the future, jobs will be automated, but there will be a need for more people to interface with people to get them in and out of the system. That's that's the way I well, see it. Well, we've, we've already seen in a lot of areas how, you know, the artisanal whatever, right? The small right. batch, handcrafted, whatever, which used to be the way everything uh, was made because there weren't any options has become, uh, you know, a luxury good. Uh, And there was some theorizing in the publishing world as eBooks began to take off that the craft of book binding and of making books that were really works of art in uh, paper books that were really works of art in addition to books was going to become you know, not something universal, but something that had, had uh, added value uh, uh, on account of this. I mean, I'm not going to stop reading things on my swindle because uh, it's just easier on my eyes and I can adjust the text size. But uh, it, it is, um, uh, you know, uh, something where uh, uh, where that is going to happen. I saw a YouTube video of them disassembling a 110-year-old Japanese house made with that custom joinery. I saw that, too. Not a single nail or bolt. It's all just 
dovetail joints and pocket joints with little pins. They took apart a 110 year old house, literally like Tinker Toys. Now, that and what Sally said, there's an entire wealth of what human beings could focus on if the promise of Aldous Huxley and all the other stuff became true. Like if technology was used to stop us from having to spend 80 hours a week working and instead we could spend our time on more you know, philosophical and benefit to society or creative pursuits. But right now we're in that weird juxtaposition where the technology is being used by the 1% to force the rest of us into pissing into bottles and working 80 hours a week as if that's necessary. And it's weird because it's not, but that's well, still what we're having. You, know, you need to have the money so you can take a little joy ride on your rocket. And yeah, you know, be realistic, Spencer. I'm saying it's not an overnight process, but what happens is like when we don't have the purpose of getting up and going to the blue collar job 80 hours a week, we all need something to keep our minds busy or else we'll start hassling our neighbors and making our families. Oh, that super so, yacht, that bloody super <laughs> yacht needs paying for, you know, come off it. You yeah. know, I was talking to somebody about this too, like how this is getting a little bit to the fringes of this topic that we're talking about. But uh, like if our ancestors see us now and like, they're like, wait, I'm sorry. You go to a, building to just lift heavy things and put them back down again and like to walk on a fake sidewalk that moves you know like because what well, you know our work or our what we do doesn't strengthen our bodies <clears throat> because we built things to do that for us right so we built machinery and technology that can do the heavy lifting so now we have to do this sort of artificial thing to keep our bodies in shape so but at the same time like just because our cell phones have the numbers in it that hasn't really turned our brains to jelly because we don't have to memorize phone numbers we now have gained other skills which are like how to do searches on the internet how to build things on the internet you know like there's all these things it just it's just different the thing that is interesting to me about this article in particular talking about the world of fiction writing is spence i feel like it was you but maybe it wasn't on <clears throat> excuse me on a previous show we were talking about uh like patterson james patterson and how he is the author of like uh, like i don't know four thousand books whatever it is it's not that many but and he still has his name on it but he's writing like two words of any of these books now they have a whole team and it's so formulaic that it's like on page 11 <clears throat> at this point this happens this conflict happens was that you that was talking about that i may have mentioned it because i also talked about the guys in sweden who are responsible for like 99 of the top 100 pop songs they figured out the formula and then for britney spears and you know, j-lo and everybody else they figured out the formula and it's like really as an entrepreneur it's a great thing to achieve but they're able to essentially guarantee if you work with them that you'll get a top you know top 10 hit and that's the thing isn't it it's like there are businesses that i'm there's one called built with which many of you have used maybe and the founder of that it's one dude in sweden and one server and one helper and I think he brings in five to $10 million a year from scraping the internet and providing data that other companies want. Those are really amazing examples of how individuals could spend their time doing stuff that doesn't require whatever that a larger company needs. I'm not saying it's a solution for everything, but we all have so many things that could be interesting to us if AI was applied to really reduce the time we used on other bullshit. And I exactly. think the problem is just when it's not used that way, it goes the other direction. We end up being slaves to some boss forcing us to do AI trivial tasks instead of, oh, you only need to work 20 hours a week now. Yeah. This, uh, this author, she's like, there's sort of like a guilt almost. Could you, did you guys pick up on that? That she's like, well, I'm just going to use it as a tool. I'm not going to, uh, just as inspiration, no cutting and pasting the things that it writes and i'm yeah, like that's I, that, so funny I, because i mean there's different levels of all this stuff right like sometimes sometimes you want to read like uh something heavy or educational or solid and sometimes you just want like a fluff a, a beach novel or a fluff read just something that's as it was mentioned there like a potato chip book which she acknowledges that that's what she's writing and yet she has guilt about using a tool to help no, her. I have, I have guilt. I don't know. I think this is just like, you have some guilt about potato chip books? No, I have guilt with my donkeys. So oh, my go. God. Here we go again. <laughs> you got to let it go with these donkeys, man. 
Uh, so anyhow, okay. people are going to get on you for animal abuse at this point. I know. No, <laughs> actually, uh, we had to, when I was living in Essex in in uh, Chelmsford, I was on the outskirts. We had a donkey sanctuary quite close to where I was living. I used to feed the donkeys, Sally. They're quite hilarious. Feed them? Like, yeah, yeah, carrots and can, all sorts of things. Can we, uh, they, can we they have character? Um, let's. <laughs> Isn't that why TikTok was invented? Greg says. I don't understand what what to we feed were talking donkeys, about. Donkeys, probably. <laughs> for, for, to watch Jonathan feed donkeys. Uh, okay, guys, moving on. Uh, story number five. Back to the tavern. WPTavern.com. Sarah Gooding's article. WordPress design contributors propose mm -hmm. shipping a curated set of style variations instead of a new default theme. I know. 100% Spence has thoughts on this, but we're not going to go to you first because we yeah. are we're going to wait. We're going to let somebody else talk first. Chris, do you want to kick it off? Sure. I think it's actually a good idea. Uh, and the reason I know that is because I'm in the weeds with it ourselves. We're getting ready to roll out a full site editing theme to go with Lifter if people just want to you know, get everything from one shop. But it's profoundly easy to create the themes these days with the new new ways it works um the theme just does less and less of the heavy lifting of the site so i understand the sentiment of why do we really need to release a new theme every day or should we focus on all these other aspects of the new wordpress editing experience and improving those um so i think it's a good move i i, I think at the end of the day um the biggest challenge wordpress has here is okay if the themes used to provide kind of a unified, um, less schizophrenic website experience. You know, like Astra is a great example. Like if you use Astra, you set it up right and you go through all the options and everything, uh, your site looks good. But as the theme does less and less of the heavy lifting and, you know, there's these expanding libraries of blocks and patterns and templates and all these things, it becomes easier for the user to create a schizophrenic design. So I think there's going to be a challenge there with um, the non-trained or talented designer building sites, and we need to focus on how to solve that. Oh, wait, there wasn't, um, as soon as we had page builders and even before that, here, let me put 15 different fonts in this, uh, 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 on this site and all kinds of clashing colors. I, I well, mean, we all be in there, Sally. Right? You know, you've had, you've had, here we come. We've had some client that's excruciatingly wanted to go through every page and pointed out a pixel not right. And then you get them to sign off and then three months later you go back to the site and they've been hacking away at it and it's like a dog's breakfast, isn't it? You know, hmm. so, you know, there I we go. But, um, I, I was having a chat with John about this yesterday and um, you can, I'm just so fed up with all this, Stephanie, you know, this is, you know, you can see all, you can see all the promise, but this, this, you know, it's technology, so it's never really finished. But this this should have all been done about two years ago. <laughs> they were like three years plus into this into this wandering road, and no four. All right, four years. You know, when, oh, come off it for God's sake! Just get the thing semi finished and. Done well, I with. think that's part of the point of this proposal is that. Uh, we we need to really, you know, finish this full site editing stuff, and therefore let's not waste time doing a whole complete theme. Let's play with some of the features. Yeah. Well. <clears throat> All right. I, I, and, oh, John's gonna go. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say there's a comment in there. Somebody was uh, comparing this proposal to the CSS Zen Garden and yeah. MySpace, and I think that's. I mean, if that's where they're going, I mean, if it's going to go all blocks all the time, that might be the way instead of doing another theme. I, I, I think there's a lot of things going on where the project is changing and, and maybe that's what they need to do. Spence? I, uh, I don't know exactly if this is related, but I, I do have a good word on the inside because one of my partners was speaking 
to some of the people on this team and Josefa and so forth. So my version of this is not what they were talking about, but my version of this was, of course, if we can come up with like the framework metaphor of a canvas theme, remember way back when, their version of it is more tchotchkes to control design components. So I appreciate the fact that we're at least inching forward towards the conversation of let's not try to make 500 unique one-off themes. Let's talk about common tools. But they're like this close. The differences in the details between more tchotchke controls for design, which I don't know what that metaphor of the comment was, but like, you know, your, your sea monster, like uh, design ideas. And more just like starting with something that everybody has as the base piece. Now, I do agree, and that's one of the things I keep harping on, that my solution for this, which I'm going to be talking about, is to take the themes that are currently popular, not all of them, but just a couple of them, Astra, Cadence, Bloxy, Generate Press, and just strip them down to their <coughs> basic utilities with none of the custom stuff. And when presented in a, a stack of things for free, it's incredibly remarkable how much you can get done immediately. I've been working on this for a while, and what I'm trying to suggest is that the things we need are already here. They're just in a gigantic box of Legos. Anybody who's ever had kids knows what I'm talking about, that gigantic Tupperware thing of 80 billion Lego pieces versus the original box that they all came in. And I think if the WordPress team could see, which is what I'm hoping, this is the logical way to do it. We can allow somebody to open the door to that kind of conversation. Can we just have a canvas theme instead of a new version of another 2023, 2024, 20? And that way we can all just build like common stuff. Yeah, you're totally that. right. I've got it, you know, it's first time. You want to write this down, Spence? I'm going to totally sure. agree with you. I know, I know it's a very <laughs> rare event. Oh, uh, um, so, uh, it's uh, food for the dog. So this is episode just... 712, where I actually agreed totally with something you said, Spencer. <laughs> oh, my God. So you, want, you want to write that down, Where's don't the you? Bell? We need the bell. Yeah, we need the bell, really. Um, yeah, you're totally right. You know, for God's sake, please listen. Last thing we need, we just need, listen to Uncle Spencer, for God's sake. You know, I'm... you know, just don't. I, I'm, not, what, I'm not saying anybody's listening to me ever, but what I am going to say is I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it publicly, and I'm going to put my. Well, we don't need I'm, that person. I'm going to my donkey in public, <laughs> in order to prove this is something that people can get on board with. And the biggest difference, what I'm talking about, is that it's a hundred percent inclusive of everybody. Whether you're the freelancer, whether you're the end user, whether you're the software maker, the theme maker, the plugin, this is a way for everybody to get back, like the, the Beatles thing, get back where we were in a world of WordPress confusion. In the old days, there was a small enough group of us, we just said, hey, let's do this. And it worked. Now everybody's yelling to go in the silo. This is a way to get back to some common ground. And I, I'm really, really confident that everybody's going to be excited because it's not excluding, excluding anybody or requiring money or anything. It's just taking what's in that box of Legos, putting it on the table, organizing it, and go, look, you could start with this and 90% of what people need from their businesses or their I just, think, I just think it actually needs some leadership. It just needs some plans. Need so, showing the solution. Just need to know where this thing is going, you know, uh, for God's sake. Please, somebody would in automatic. If you're listening to this, please offer some leadership. But you understand you know? when you when you look at the notes of the people who are really well intentioned in the WordPress contribution areas, they all really want to work on something good. They want to do good. There's no great ideas from the top down on what they should all work on. And so the only way to make that happen, because I'm sick of complaining. I love everybody at Master WP and Rob and Brian and everybody and Nisha, but I'm sick of complaining about it. Mm -hmm. And I'm moving on to going, here's what I'm going to do about it. Because I said, that's the way I, I look at things in business and I life. don't want another, I really honestly, listeners and watchers, I really don't want to be in a, a year's time whinging on about the paper the slowness of progress with Gutenberg. I really don't want to be there. I want it done and finished what you know as much as it can be. This is this is ridiculous. This is 
like warm piece of page builders. This needs to be a piece of page builders. <laughs> you know, well, this... it's also uh, like um, you know, there's been some uh, game development on uh, uh, very popular uh, games that people were paying money for and that people were making money for that dragged on for years and still produced a not very good uh, project. Um, <clears throat> so it, it's it's not a purely WordPress thing. Uh, this ability for uh, technology projects to drag on and on and on and on. This has taken the biscuit, though, isn't it? Let's be honest here, taken panel. The this, is really, this is taken the shark the... has jumped the wait. Oh, what is it? My God. No, when when John reminded right. me, this was four years ago when this particular subject was kicked off, and we're still. No. Talk about it. Oh my God! Well, no. Father. See, four years ago, when when this particular subject was 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 kicked off, there was a whole lot of uh, there were a whole lot of attempts to reassure people that no, no, this was not uh, going to be something that that like attempted to replace page builders. It's all related, though, because if you look at, I actually listened to a Mixergy uh, where Andrew was interviewing Clay Mask from Infusionsoft, i.e., Confusionsoft. Confusionsoft, and, yeah. and Clay is a good guy. But he finally revealed publicly what happened that caused him to shag his donkey. And that is that they took private equity in order to grow. And the leadership that was brought in by the private equity didn't understand the customers, uh -huh. didn't understand the position, he didn't understand the product. And for three years, this whole, all of his behavior being so schizophrenic like, it turns out it was because there was an internal struggle for power. Well, we're experiencing the very well, same what do you here. expect when you do a deal with the devil? You know, he, God's he, like, you know what happened? He wrestled it back, and now whatever they're doing, they can't undo what they did, but at least now it's under oh and like I said, apologetic. If Matt, excuse me, would just accept that he can do whatever he wants on dot com, but put somebody in charge of dot org so we can get back to like doing the thing that dot org is supposed to do then these four years will not have been for naught. But in the, if that doesn't happen, then somebody has to just do it without his blessing. Well, and we've that's, got a viewer that's here, that. listeners. Craig, he's been very vicious. He's vicious than me. Gutenberg is what... No, nah, I'm sorry. Anybody using Visual Bakery would disagree with that, Craig. I'm sorry. Guys, <clears throat> I hate to say it, but we've got one story left and we're running right out of time yeah. let's jump over to bleepingcomputer.com where we're going to talk about this uk heat wave causing google and oracle cloud outages by lawrence abrams this has been a mess <laughs> the heat over there is nuts uh jonathan has your family melted or are they are they just liquid puddles now oh they're they just okay? dissolved they're english they're not yeah. used to anything above 30 you know you know sally yeah. will tell you that you know the whole you know the whole country would literally must have dissolved in front of the population uh, well uh, yes i mean if if you're accustomed to being in a place where half the time you don't need to refrigerate things in the kitchen in the summertime because it just doesn't get warm enough. Uh, it, you know, nobody is equipped to handle this heat, even apparently the data centers, which unlike ordinary people's homes, must have some kind of HVAC system. Uh, and so, you know, as I've heard in totally non-tech um, contexts you know as global warming makes our average temperatures higher the places that are already hot will suffer you know we'll have more fires but we're still already set up with some infrastructure to deal with heat whereas in the places that were traditionally you know not hot before those people have no infrastructure and therefore it is going to hit them harder and we are certainly seeing that yeah. but it doesn't have to be heat you only need an inch of snow in london and the whole bloody uh, uh, well well you yeah, know, you only the, 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 the leaves on the railroad le tracks in the fall leaves or anything stephanie in the whole country the whole britain just and for, if you're traveling through Heathrow and anything happens like fog, anything, you can spend yeah, days. Because, you know, there's never been fog in Britain before. No, no, never. It's uh, the whole uh, thing. So my good friend Mike Devitt is in the chat. He is 
in the London area, and he's he's one of my um, co-panelists on Divi Chat each week. And he's poor guy. He that was Tuesday evening nighttime. That's when this all hit the fan. Yeah, I think. That, another, I, I think don't know if that's the right expression because I don't. Apparently, they didn't have any fans. No, no fans. Yeah. So, but uh, I think a, a related story yeah. that's linked to this is what happened in Canada with that awful company Rogers. You know, they hey, push up. We're not up. talking about that yet, John. Don't yeah, don't jump stories on me. Come on, man. Well, we've got to come to end anyway. Aren't we? It's our fault. I know we do. We're almost done. But this one is. Uh, so what happened here? The interesting part about this story is that we've got these data centers with Google and Oracle. Well, whatever happened, the things overheated, they probably just shut them down so they wouldn't melt. And then that trickled down to what the part that I saw and what, what Mike Devitt here experienced was that SiteGround and tons of other SiteGround servers, because they were relying on these Google and Oracle servers, SiteGround went down for 17 hours uh, or higher, you know, like a really long time. And then yeah, now that's not, that's not, that's not, that, that's not. That's not unusual it, anyway, is it? <laughs> SiteGround is okay. They're they're one of the okay <laughs> shared ones, you know, shared hosting. But anyway, so but now they're they're losing tons of customers. And the interesting discussion is what should they have done? This wasn't their servers, actually. This was the Google and Oracle <laughs> ones that overheated and went down. See, Mike so agreed. Now, see, Mike agreed there. You know, see. That's why we're friends. He agrees yeah. with me. No, so, he's agreeing with me. Oh, uh, I don't know about that. But anyway, so they, you know, what what should SiteGround have done? Should they have moved everybody really fast? I mean, there was no way for them to know how long this would go. There was like, there's SiteGround was really put between a rock and a hard place with this because they, it wasn't actually their fault. And now here they are, they're losing tons of customers. And, you know, it's a, not an. It wasn't considered an act of God, but what's that other term, uh, Spence? You you know it, right? It's for something that's like out of everybody's control. It was the dog's um, breakfast. For, force <laughs> majeure. Force <laughs> majeure, or something like that. It was those yeah. bloody donkeys. That was it. That sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. You don't even. You just. That, that's yeah, correct. I you have certainly correct. heard you, of you the got term it force it's majeure again. The clause in the contract, force majeure, is when force it's majeure. something outside of the control of anybody. I know. So I don't know who the Facebook user is because I didn't do the thing. But anyway, so, um, yeah, who else has a thought on this? Chris, what do you think? And then we're going to have to move on to our recommendations. These kind of big outages always just remind us that even when you're hosted on Google or or Cloudflare or something, there's, there is failure out there. So it's, it's just important to recognize that, and especially if you build your business on top of it. The reason it's called 99.9 uptime is because stuff does go down. It's inevitable. So be prepared. And there's only so much you can do, like if your host goes away. Right. But... I mean, the irony is that people use, you know, the Amazon servers or the Google servers or the, or, or the whatever in order to maintain more availability. But those things can go down. You know, we've had the Amazon stuff go down. We've had the Facebook yeah, stuff especially... go down. Every, everybody has this happen. Especially we've got no fans in the data center in London. <laughs> I, I yep. strive for a 99% uptime personally. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. No, I'm, I'm only up like no, I'm being serious. Of the time. I know. Yeah, I bet. Okay, guys, let's move on to recommendations. Lightning round once again, because Steph can't manage time well. So uh i have i have one i'm gonna do it's just kind of a fun one this one is called doodleipsum.com and it's great for if you want just it's there's little illustration styles some people are over it but if you have a little page or a sales page or a demo page or something you're doing and you just need some graphic elements some illustration kind of things you can go and generate a bunch of things on there for free and download the images it's just a fun little tool to play with that's mine. John Locke, what do you got? It's a wonderful podcast uh, with creatives, uh, web designers, um, all different types of people that work in the web industry. It's called Revision Path. So revisionpath.com. Check it out. There's probably well, a lot of people. I do hope it's uh, diverse, though. Check it out. <laughs> Check it out. John Locke, you know it's diverse. Yeah. Uh, no, Spencer, they're they're great. I I've been listening to them for years. Oh. All right, did you call me? Yep. I have a tool that came useful 
if you are building something for a client who needs access to especially admin menus and you don't want to use a tool like admin menu editor, which is really handy, there's a plugin called admin, admin toolbar menus. What it does is it there's three spots on the main admin bar, right? The left side, the kind of like main stuff, and then the right side. You can pick one of those three spots and add in a custom drop down menu. And what I was able to do with it, which is really handy, was create custom shortcuts to the inner submenus of things that are useful. Like maybe I'm working in Lifter LMS and I want to go to the lesson creation tab. Instead of dragging down and going over and going, to, you just make a custom navigation menu for your client. And it's literally like the fastest time saver ever. And it's universal because you make it relative URLs. You don't have to put the domain in. And it can be import exported. So that was something that was, I thought, really I handy see. versus those tools that, you know, adjust the primary menu. And then it always has to be resorted every time. Yeah. Great one. Uh, Chris, what's your recommendation for the week? I put a link in the chat. Uh, it's a presentation by Patrick Campbell on pricing. And it's, it's very uh, useful if you're launching any kind of especially digital product or service. I've learned a lot from that guy, so I highly recommend checking out. Is that out. Patio 11? That's Patty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patio 11. He always says, it's Patrick Campbell, Patio 11. And yeah. Like from 1979. Yeah. He's with Stripe uh, now, isn't he? Paddle. Stripe competitor. Paddle acquired them. Oh, okay. Because, yeah. But loads of reddies. Loads of reddies. Sally. Uh, my recommendation this week uh, is catchafire.org. I, I, I know, of course, uh, from all of our discussions about Five for the Future, we may be pretty busy uh, just trying to give back to WordPress. But uh, the purpose of this uh, organization is to match uh, nonprofits that need various kinds of services uh, with volunteers uh, who can do them. So if you are looking for a uh, pro bono project, or if you're if you've got something uh, uh, you're thinking of like a a, a do action uh, workshop uh, to get out there and connect, uh, uh, or there you know of a cause you'd like to do something for, there are definitely people looking for web development and related uh, skills on there. Uh, and of course, if you uh, have started a nonprofit or work for one or have one that's a client, that's a resource to pass on to them for the things they can't afford to pay you to do. And Jonathan. Yeah, I've got a little add-on for Chrome or Firefox. It's called, um, what is it called? It's What Runs. It Basically, it's free and it tells you what technology a website is running. It's quite a little useful little tool. Nice. Guys, that's us for the week. It, wherever you are, if you are watching right now on YouTube or Facebook, whether you're listening on your podcast app, wherever you are, do us a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe so you get notified of future episodes and don't miss a minute of all of these exciting discussions and arguments about WordPress and tech. So we will see you guys next week. Thanks so much for being here, everybody. Bye. Eeyore. Bye. Eeyore. Ha, <laughs>